It is our privilege to welcome our next speaker who is an icon in the field of education. Dr. Indu Shahani has over four decades of experience in higher education and is a visionary who leads by example. She is the president and chairperson of five new age education schools in design and innovation, media and communication, management and entrepreneurship, hospitality and culinary arts, and at entertainment arts as well. Subjects which were not touched upon in our formal education system earlier. <coughs> she carries rich experience and expertise of 25 years as the principal of HR College of Commerce in Economics, which is still date the highest accredited commerce college in the country. Dr. Shahani has been instrumental in heralding the advertising, media, and communication education in the country. For her exceptional service in the field of education, Dr. Shahani was nominated as the Sheriff of Mumbai for two successful terms of 2008 and 2009, and she played a lead role <laughs> as a member of, university, of the University Grants Commission, UGC, at the national level. Dr. Shahani was the first Indian to be appointed Vice Chair on the Board of Governors of the International Baccalaureate and has over a decade of experience with the IB worldwide. She has been awarded an honorary Doctor of Letters, DLIT degree by the University of Westminster, London. Dr. Shani is an independent director on boards of key listed companies such as Colgate, uh, United Spirits, Diageo, HSB Asset Management, Eureka Forbes, Bajaj Electricals, and Clarion Chemicals. Uh, she is the chair of the Women's India Trust, former chair of United Way Mumbai, and member Save the Children. No mean feat, all of the above. Kindly join me in extending a warm welcome to Dr. Shahani. And with her vast experience, we look forward to her thoughts on Vasudeva Kutumbakam in education. Could I request Chandrika Voraji, study group and Devi group coordinator, Chinmaya Mahima Zone, to welcome her with a token of our appreciation. Without further ado, I'd like to invite Dr. Shani, the Doyen of Indian Education, to address us and share her thoughts. A very good afternoon to all of you, and thank you very much for inviting me here today. Uh, it's indeed a pleasure and an honor for me to be a part of this organization and speaking here this evening, this afternoon. Uh, and such a pleasure to share the uh, you know, stage with you, ma'am, or oh, doing such good work. And Swamiji, thank you so much also for inviting me here. Uh, you know, they say Vasudeva Kutamkam, but let me tell you that for me, when you are a fa when you are a teacher and when you've been a principal of a college, and and a college like HR College. From the minute I have entered, till the minute I went for lunch, till the minute I came out from, from lunch, I've only been meeting my students. And I would say education is the biggest kutum kum that anyone can ever be privileged to have. And I think I'm blessed, Swamiji, I'm blessed that today I can uh, you know, really say that my world is so much bigger than even the seven continents who are going to come because everyone touches my heart as, as, as the days keep going on and how blessed, blessed we are. And here is what I'm going to really share with you uh, what um, my mother had said to me. After I finished my Masters of Commerce, an MCOM degree with the Sydenham College, I was deciding uh, to, you know, what should I do? Uh, the principal of the college invited me because I had already started teaching that come and join us as the lecturer of the Sydenham College. And then another, uh, 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 you know, thing happened was that a very big multinational company uh, opened up to MCOMs to apply. Otherwise, it was only MBAs, and it was only the IIMs who were applying, and they opened up to all our colleges. And I said, why shouldn't I also try and apply here? 
So I applied seven tier interview and three months of interview and I never studied so hard as I studied for this interview because I said I must beat my friends who did IIMs and I, I went to do a Master of Commerce. So let me, let me uh, try and get this. And the seventh interview, I clear it and the final eighth interview is just with the managing director to accept the job. And I'm going for that. I was very excited because I said, wow, let me work for the industry and let me see how it is. And it was a bit of the influence of my friends. And when I am in the elevator, just about to go down, my mother, you know how wonderful mothers are? They come to drop you to the elevator. They'll do the last puja for you. And then they come and whisper some beautiful things in your ears, which change your life. She said, the returns you will get from the smiles of the students will go far beyond the returns you will get in selling soap, shampoo, and detergent. <laughs> and every day I really bless my mother. Thank you so much. I, I, it's, it's never ending. I can go to even pick lockery in Scotland and I'm into a store and I pick up a t-shirt. Hi, ma'am. And it's a student again there. So you, you never know where, where this ends and the smiles don't stop at all. And <clears throat> I'm so privileged that they accompany me everywhere. I have my young student who's now working with me, Achal, who's here with me. Thank you, Achal, for being here with me. So now, now that we are talking about a digital world, I think, should I take you a little bit into that digital world, or do you just want me to talk out of the heart? I will talk out of the heart also, but I'll also take you a little bit into what used to frustrate me in my 25 years in, of teaching and learning in a very good college, amazing college, number one college uh, even till today in, in accreditation, what used to really frustrate me is 19th century curriculum taught by 20th century faculty to 21st century students. Are we really looking at these young faces? Is this the kutumkam that we want to bring up? with an old curriculum, with old thinking, the BA, BCOMs, and BSCs of the world have gone. And newer things have happened. When I was in the last year wanting to do something different, I met the corporates and they said, design is going to change the world. Technology is going to change the world. Embrace it. And here we are now chalk and talking and here we are saying that now embrace technology. But thank God for the pandemic. We all, education embraced technology only because of the pandemic. And things changed, right? It happened. Pandemic may have hit the world very differently, but it, it, it actually reduced the div digital dividend because I could give my iPhones and my phones to my maids' uh, uh, children, and they could still be doing their schooling. Actually, people say there was a digital divide, but that reduced. And, and technology can have the power. And I'm sure your children would be sitting sometimes, and we would be happy to do some uh, sessions with them if you can put up a screen and, and actually do digital sessions with them. So, you know, these are things which we couldn't have done before. So I thought that today I'll talk to you about Gen Z. 21st century we gaya up Gen Z. You are probably Gen X or Gen Y, <laughs> all right? This is Gen Z and my granddaughter is Gen Alpha. <laughs> she turns around and she tells me, Ma, don't make your lecture boring. 
I said, no, I, I promise I won't. You know, our teacher sometimes makes it very, very boring. So I said, no, I understand from you. She said, Ma, keep smiling. I said, OK, I'll keep smiling. Gen Z, can you imagine how much they'll demand in the classroom? They're not going to ask for the 19th century curriculum. So we started what was called the Atlas Skill Tech University. And let me tell you a little bit how our journey has been, very quickly. So future of education, future of the kutumbam growing is democracy, democratized, democratized. Future of education is individualized. People want to learn what they want to learn. A young student gets up, goes up the elevator with me recently. He's in the first year of Bachelor of Business Administration. I said, what are you going to do after three years? He says, why? I'm already doing it. I'm running my own startup. And I said, then what are you going to do in the two years in the college, next two years in the college? He says, ma'am, I'm here to build networking. I'm here to build knowledge. I'm here to build so many different things. I'm here to build experiences, right? You seeing what different things students want? Are we able to set, individualize our uh, learning for the learner? That's very important. Large classes, even in that, you can do that. And finally, it has to be accessible. As ma'am here is, is doing such a wonderful job in Jharkhand, I was just sitting and I was thinking, how could we make that accessible? My students can't travel there, her students can't travel here, but we can go digital. And we can, we can actually be on Zoom calls and my students can be talking to her, her children and they could be talking and these things can happen. Right, so the question is, are universities today listening to Gen Z? And Gen Z are very strong generation. Today's generation is very strong. 82% uh, of them, they say, this is a survey done by us, that education has not equipped them with the skills they need. Today, they don't need education and books so much as they need skills. So skilling has become most important, and that is being emphasized by the national education policy. 84% say that knowledge is becoming obsolete even before you bring it to the classroom. It is. The number of, did we ever think chat GPT will take over my classes? It is. Will it take over my exams? It is. Is it going to be doing that? And there's a smart young student who made a, his own question bank of eight questions for the next exam, took all the answers from chat GPT, put it on a Xerox center, and said, Jisko bhi chahiye usko de de na. And the Xerox center was mobbed, and everybody had taken that up. How is the evaluator going to evaluate? He came to me and he said, all questions and answers are identical. I said, now the challenge is yours, not the generations. It's your challenge. And so what he's going to do, he's an after all an IIT professor we have. So he said, now I'm going to call three, three students at the time and tell them to explain what they've written. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it is. Right, so this is what, what, what the generation wants. They are very much against the digital divide. They, they are very concerned. You may not think that this is this, you know, they're taken as unke phate hoye jeans dekho, unka wo dekho. You think this is a careless generation? It's not. They are very concerned about climate change and sustainability. This is some things that's already there. And they want absolutely leading edge skills. They want digital learning. They are they want practical application. Today, when I was coming, this is made, I didn't make it. I told a young student, I'm going to the Chinmaya mission, and it's a G20 session. And he said, tell me what the audience is going to be like. And I guessed what the audience would be, the age group. And he said, I'll tell you what to, what, what, what to put. And he puts few things. Achal sits together. We sit together in the car, and we are ready with our presentation. This is how the generation is today. 
Okay, let's go ahead. I want to give you three examples. Ham kya pada sakte hain bachcho ko? This young man, Shorya, I wish I could have brought him along. Passionate about healthcare solutions for the specially abled. Okay, this is what he wants to do. Is commerce, accounting, what we teach him in, is that going to help him in this? Look at the skills he needs. He needs psychology because he needs to understand the, the specially able. Then he needs digital technology, he needs design, and he needs entrepreneurship. Am I able to teach all this in my classroom? That's my challenge, right? Okay, now look at Nilay Raheja. He wants, he's very passionate about financial inclusion. He wants to start, start something very strong in a fintech area. What are the skills required here? Behavioral science, UI, UX. How many of you have heard of UI, UX? That's the latest. Of course, there are some very intelligent people here. But UI, UX is user interface and user experience, what we are doing right now. The other day, somebody writes to me, I'm, I'm going to appoint 10 students of yours, give placements with a top uh, amount job. The job description is not sent, the job name is sent. What is the job? The job of a mood analyst. Job description kaan se laayam? They said, don't worry, ma'am, give us one day, we'll write the description. They went to the, the, to, to the uh, mall, went into every store, noticed the moods of people in different stores, how in Gucci, what kind of people have moods, what kind of people have moods when they go to a McDonald's, what kind of moods, and they wrote a job description and sent it back to the company. Company hired all 10 of them. Jobs of the future. Gone are the jobs of the future that you and I did. I produce the largest number of CAs in HR college. I cannot produce them any longer now. All right, third one. Passionate about rural education. That's what I was telling you, ma'am, that they're very, very passionate about it. Curriculum development, cloud computing, Machine learning, geotagging. This is the skills she requires. Does my course teach it? So therefore, we started a school of design, a school of technology, and a school of management. And we said, let there be multidisciplinary skills. Do you understand that uh, the national education policies also today talking only about multidisciplinary? All right. Uh, let's look at uh, uh, the growing trends in higher education. First, technology. Everybody knows about it. And may I share, it's, a, it's really a privilege for us today what happened to us five days back when three of my young students did such a brilliant project in design and in product design in communication design and in interiors on an iPad. What do you think happened when those were sent to the Apple global field? See what happened. It brought Tim Cook to our college. <laughs> Sorry, let me go back. That's a, that's a video. May I have it, please? Play the video, please. You must see it. Absolutely a humble man, came quietly, have a look, M sound.
that was it that brought him here to us. And I must say that he, in that, you know, we said to him, write in the iPad whatever message you have for the student. And he said, enjoy the joy of learning. And that's what he wrote and he went. And, you know, people were wondering, how did you get it? He didn't go to the IITs, he didn't go to any of these. It's just the young students, right? It's the power of the young students, the power of the young who think differently and who are allowed to think differently. We tell them, you create your curriculum. We became India's first skill tech university during the pandemic, thanks to the state of Maharashtra, who was forward looking their skills department uh, their IS officers, ladies, were forward looking to create this vision and said, go ahead and create a private university. And we became India's first private university. <laughs> and with design and technology, our entrepreneurship. Too long in India, we have brought in uh, job seekers. It's time to now create and develop job creators. And therefore, we've made entrepreneurship. Now, there was mayhem, and you didn't see so many people for Tim, uh, uh, you know, cook because we had not announced it. He came unannounced. We were told he came at four o'clock. We were told at two o'clock. But how smart my students were! They knew that the new iPad that's coming out is in yellow color, so they got all yellow T-shirts at that time in two hours. From, from the guy down the road. And they had those t-shirts worn there also ready. But we didn't know about him coming. This man, the next video I'm showing you, we knew he was coming. How many of you watch Shark Tank? Okay, you know Piyush Bansal? Lens cut. Usko mat bulana apne college mein. College toot jayega. The amount of people are came, that students, kahan se ye bachche aaye, kaano mein se bachche nikal rahe te, Piyush Bansal ko sunne ke liye. But I will tell you something about the man, his humility was outstanding. And I'm so glad that I had called somebody who was humble and who gave the right messages to the students. He said, don't try to be cool, but bring in content. He said, don't try to make only money and valuation, but think about meaning for your product and for your service. And see what, what mayhem we had. Itne bachche to humne class mein bhi kabhi nahi dekhe the. Go ahead. That's him. So you did see that entrepreneurship attracts a lot of people. Uh, next is globalization. I think these are the G20 aspects that I'm focusing on. Technology, entrepreneurship, globalization. Now, if our prime minister can become the president and India can become the president for G20, it's time that we started thinking that now more and more people want to come to India. We sent out an invite. We are only 18 months old university. We sent out an invite to the world saying, please, we're going to be having an international faculty week. Come, but you have to teach all our students. And we have 3,000 students. You'll have to take a week. We'll pay everything for you, but you come and teach and bring your global experience for our 3,000 students. Hundreds of applications came. We selected 25 people, and 25 people for one week, morning to night, taught the students. But at the end of the day, they said, we've learned more from Indian students. That was the power of <laughs> India. Let's go for it, the next one. I'm sorry, I'm just going to take five, 10 minutes more.
coração. My personal takeaway from it is that one of the things I try to teach my students is that you need to be really adaptable and really flexible and if you have those skills you can work anywhere. I think Atlas um, has an international perspective which is learning from other academics. We all learn from each other, we all inspire each other, but we all kind of look for innovation and how we can bring that innovation into our students. Atlas's International Faculty Week is an absolutely fantastic endeavour. It's an amazing opportunity for me. It's been fantastic to meet the students, meet the faculty, to be in this kind of environment. Atlas Skill Tech University is the kind of place I wish I'd studied at as an undergrad. So Atlas has done something which is probably quite unique in this region. I can see uh, the skills and teaching going on. I'll also be really impressed with the faculty. I think we have to remember that your faculty are important in delivering uh, to the students. Atlas is concerned with the real future of its students. I think the way it's been set up is to... So, to think I think about the point we're making here is accessibility. So many of these students will never get a chance to go abroad, right? Will not get a chance to go and study abroad. And we felt that why should we not bring in that exposure for them here. And so that's what it is. And then one of the last points that I want to say is, and something very, very close to my heart, is that there has to be a, a learning for the students that there is a whole community outside which is not so privileged. And that it is the responsibility of those who are privileged to go out and help those communities. Our students, believe it, have created community refrigerators outside the college where they bring their foods and all the students bring and pack them up. And during the day, any people around, we've got about the Kurla, Bandra Kurla has got about 100, 200 slums and villages and around there which who come, their children come. I've seen children come from schools, the, when their municipal schools, so on, open, pick up and, and foods and go home and, and have things that they would never have got a chance. This has been done by young students, creating refrigerators all around the school. <laughs> so let's look at very quickly what sustainability. Three days in a, in a year, we close down our college and we get municipal school children who actually uh, are taught skills, soft skills, by our students. And this is what, it's very little, ma'am, to what you're doing, but you know, whatever we can do in Mumbai. So we can go quickly if there is uh, something there, otherwise we can just go, there is, okay. I hope we can go quickly. That's our vice chancellor. Sati is a mela that they do for NGOs. I 
think we can stop. I think they've got an idea on this. So, uh, just coming in back in time and uh, winding up very quickly by saying that uh, the NEP is making it multidisciplinary, and as you can see, digitalization, globalization, diversity and inclusion, all of this is a part of the NEP, and I think G20 is going to, going to ensure that all of this is brought in into their discussions, and so I wanted to bring it in today's discussion. Very quickly, just to say that it's now time for uh, Education 4.0, and 4.0 needs to go into integrated uh, learning. Uh, what is skill tech? Skills plus technology and plus the core curriculum. And I feel very strongly that there has to be an experience of industry within for the teachers and for the students. And therefore, we set up, as you can see, in BKC, please, uh, I would my humble request to Chinmaya Mission to get your people in one day for a visit. We would be very happy to host you. My students would be very happy to host you. And uh, just next to that, we've, become, we've been very, very lucky to get uh, a hostel facility which we are creating for our students. Because I think uh, in Mumbai, we get 60% of our students from all over India. And I think for them to stay here is impossible. Uh, I would say I'm, we are very fortunate. This is the board that we have. We have Mr. Deepak Parekh heading it. There are m many others, as you can see, Mr. Anand Koenka and Colgate, uh, McKinsey, HDFC, SEAT, all of them are here with us. We have professors. We are very, very fortunate that all of them in this short time have joined hands with us. I would just say that this has been a dream for us to build leaders uh, of the future. And uh, you know, these are the ones, what do they really want? They want technology, that this is what is wanted, and we are delivering that. And I would just say that India's future will be shaped in her classrooms. And I think the classrooms of the future are the classrooms we are trying to build, and the students of the future are themselves building those classrooms. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure for me to be here. Thank you. 20 minutes on the dot, okay? If there, if there are any, I could answer from here itself. If or, so would you like to be here or should I be here? I'm happy, comfortable here. Sure, please, sir. Please, my, my privilege. Adi Om. Yeah. Uh, fantastic session. In fact, I've been knowing Induji and the whole family for a long time. I still remember, ma'am, many years ago, I got a call from one of my friends from Kolkata. Indu Shahani Ji ke college mein admission milega kya? Aisa, aisa kaun sa college hai? But I know now the whole university. You know, ma'am, there's something which probably. Sir, you know, would it? Will you be more comfortable sitting down? No, no, down? I'm comfortable. Okay. You know, there are many roles that she plays, but I'm sure it starts with your mother. Instead of selling shampoos and soaps, creating the future in the classrooms. There is one thing which I personally know. You know, you've been on so many university committees apart from your own university, and you know, there is something that you mentioned towards the last night, NEP 2020. Friends, believe me, it's going to be a game changer. Whether it's school, college, or universities. You know, there's one thing which everybody's worried about, be it parents, teachers, or even students. What about the implementation of NEP? I'm sure you already done it. Any thoughts on that? So I think uh, the government has been very, very pragmatic about the implementation of NEP. They have gone into different states and asked the states themselves to say when they are ready and to implement. Maharashtra has implemented it only very recently. And therefore, I would say that uh, uh, the implementation is, and also uh, the uh, UGC chairman very often uh, has a discussion with all the vice chancellors of the university to say, 
do you have any problems? Do you have anything? And we would be able to help you out with it. So I think different states will be adapting it uh, in, in, a, in different phases, depending on how ready they are to take such a, such a s uh, step. I have to just tell you one thing about this NEP. Uh, when we started the design school, one of the things required was that most of the, the faculty members should be PhDs. Now, it's not always easy to get a PhD, right, in a design school, especially when you want a mood analyst, when you want to develop a UI, UX person, where are you going to get those PhDs from? So I went to the UGC chairman and I said, sir, uh, you know, tell me where can I find these? Are you a, he said, I'm an electrical engineer and I'm a PhD in electrical engineering, so one is uh, on mechanical engineering, computer engineering, where do I get the uh, person specialized for this? Because designers want to get into their work. They don't want to carry on studying and doing PhDs, though they do a lot of research. And then he said, what is your suggestion? I said, sir, let there be professors of practice. Those who have practiced in the real industry, let them come back to us as faculty, and we should be able to employ them. I went on 9th March 2022. On 10th March 2022, we had announced it. This is how the UGC works. I must give credit to our government for working so quickly. He announced this, and we have been able to, and 2% of our faculty members to on the whole, so say I've got 200 faculty, 10 can be professors in practice. Any of you want to be professors in practice, you're most welcome. In fact, uh, that's a very important point you mentioned, professor in practice. So those who are practicing in different fields, welcome to academics. Yes, welcome to that's academics. That's truly Vasudeva Kutumbagam. You know, one technical challenge that many educations are facing, you know, today, high-end courses, I would say, when I say high-end, I mean very the technical courses like engineering and medicine are being taught in regional languages. I can see that in Tamil Nadu, that 12 engineering and medical colleges teaching in Tamil. And you know, books are getting translated from English to regional languages. Do you see any challenges of implementation in such, such cases? Um, well, I think region, because I have a couple of young people who are working for me who have come in from, one has come in from Tamil Nadu and one has come in from uh, 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 Uttar Pradesh. I think they're very, very comfortable in their own languages. And so I would have been very happy. I may, I'm making them do uh, uh, you know, distance learning uh, through, through the Bombay University, which is in English. I feel that if it was in the reg regional languages, it would have been much better. Our reach of education, our accessibility of education will be much more, and we should welcome that. Thank you so much. So it's a blessing to have this in different languages. Yeah. Regional, local, and of course, of course. international. The last question, because of the time yeah. limitation. You know, in the 1960s and 70s, there was a concept of brain drain. And I remember there was a joke around, it's better to have brain drain rather than having brain in the drain. <laughs> brain in the drain, okay. But you know, you mentioned about your school that you know you are giving global education in India affordable, but still we can see in tier two cities, a lot of people going abroad and the number is going up, especially in higher education. Any closing thoughts on that? First of all, if we are saying Vasudeva uh, Kutamgam, uh, that means we are taking the whole world as one Kutum, right? So where is the brain drain in that? If my, uh, somebody goes and runs Google there or runs Microsoft there, it's not brain drain. He's running a company, a corporate company. Look at, I, have to, I wish I had brought that video in. If you have it, you should show it to them. The one that uh, I was in New York taking a taxi to go to uh, uh, some, some place there and I sit in this yellow cab, yellow cab, okay? I sit in the yellow cab and I sit around there and the uh, taxi driver turns around and he says, are you an Indian? And I said, yes, I'm an Indian. And he was not an Indian or a Pakistani or anybody from Asia. 
He was from probably, uh, you know, you know, Latin America or somewhere there. And I said, why are you asking me whether I'm an Indian? And he says, because you Indians are running the world. <laughs> Taxi driver. I have the video also. If possible, I'll try and show you. Are running the world. I said, why? I said, Microsoft, you've got the chief there. Then Google, you've got the chief there. Then now MasterCard, you have got the chief there. Now World, uh, uh, World Bank, you've got the chief there. And then he said, now you have lent an Indian to UK to become the prime minister. <laughs> that taxi driver telling me that in a taxi, Latin American <laughs> taxi driver, right? Which is, is that brain drain? or we are taking over the brain of the world. <laughs> we are taking the, the, the Vasudhaiva brain. Thank you so much, Induji. Thank you, Shai. I still remember our prime minister once quoting, there are two types of Indians, those who geographically live in India and the Indian diaspora who are ruling the world outside India. And we can see that when he goes abroad, the whole stadium gets filled in, right? Yeah. So I think. But that that's also because we've got such a big population. Unko jara jane do, jahan jahan jana hai jane do. We've got, we are the largest populated country now in the world. Just like China, we are going to be all over. And I don't know if you have seen that the latest figures that have come out, the Indian Americans are the highest in their highest paid and the highest income in the world or in America compared to all the others. So I think that, that just goes to show the brain drain has helped us in a way. So all the best, and I feel that uh, I don't think uh, studying here, studying abroad, wherever you feel, I think the world is one today. And I, one thing I definitely felt strongly about, if our Indian faculty can go there and create such great institutions, the principal, the dean of Howard is an Indian, the dean of NYU is an Indian, the dean of Wharton is an Indian. If they are all the in Indians who are going there and actually creating, why can't we create world-class institutions here? So that even Tim Cook comes to us. Thank you so much. Post-lunch is usually the most challenging, right? And you made it very interesting. Thank you so much.